Yeah, and I mean, as long as they're beating, right, and that's beating expectations. I mean, earnings aren't great. I'll put that caveat out there. But the way markets trade, it's between expectations and reality. And, man, expectations have just been so dire the last 12 months. Um, and you look at a lot of these economists and strategists look dead wrong now. Um, you know, they've been a little too negative. And what you're seeing is you're seeing the data come in much better than expected. And you know, if you look at profits, they're actually better than what was anticipated. Hence, the market's had a phenomenal run since, like, last fall. Now, we did lower the bar quite a bit, and we're leaping over a, a lower bar, essentially. But recessionary predictions, we've heard very little of them, few and far between, whereas you go back a quarter, it was all we were hearing. And in fact, we started out with all the big bank CEOs predicting a mild recession. We haven't heard much of that from CEOs who are pointing to the consumer. What do you see? Yeah. Yeah, it's remarkable, right? We had that jobs number, which was insane on Friday. Like, that, that is not a recessionary jobs report. And what blows my mind is that, to your point, every strategist, every CEO is the most anticipated recession of all time. Of course, we were positive the whole way through. We, we really didn't think that was going to be the case. And now you're seeing everyone shift their tune all of a sudden, saying soft landing, like all of a sudden out of the blue. And I think it just speaks to the fact that, look, you've got a strong consumer. Um, and the reason they're strong is we still have some pandemic stimulus left, something like a trillion dollars. But more importantly, you know, wages are going up and the job market's strong. That's going to keep people spending this year. And that's what drives the U.S. economy. It's not that complicated. Ryan, how much does it matter whether or not we do fall into a recession, just given the fact that so much of that fear you would think has already been priced in at this point? That's a great point, because I always say anticipation is mitigation. You know, everyone's thinking about recession. Everybody's talking about it. So what were those CEOs doing? They're going back in their businesses and they're looking for where they could cut, where they could actually you know, rewrite the ship, even before any sort of like recession happens. And that's why the numbers are already coming in better, because the, the, the hurdle's been lowered. They're already proving their balance sheet ahead of time. That's already being anticipated. So then, hence, like it's already priced into the market. I would argue that was priced in last year. That's why you're getting all this good news now. True. So you say tech is in the midst of a dead cat bounce. My, my favorite actual phrase when it comes to the stock market, other than maybe catch a falling knife, those are my two uh, favorite. <laughs> Why so? Describe yeah. what you're seeing in big well, Two good ones, Dave. But you know, I think bottom line is, look, I mean, tech has come down a lot. You're seeing a big bounce this year in the NASDAQ. It's like up like 16%, mm -hmm. but it's still down over 20% from the highs. And I think what you're seeing is very similar to what we saw in the tech bubble burst. You had you know, a huge sell from the NASDAQ. You had all those big tech companies get hammered, and they'd had these big bounces, and then they would go down again. And look, if you look at the big five this past quarter, they had 1% revenue growth. Valuations are still high, so I think that is going to be problematic for them moving forward. They just they may just do nothing for the next couple of years just because you kind of have to get those valuations down. A couple of years. Microsoft did nothing for 13 years after the tech bubble burst. People forget that. So tech can be dead for a long time. Don't be seduced into these rallies. Isn't AI and ChatGPT the one X factor there? <laughs> How are they going to make money with that? No one's talking about that. I know it's cool technology, but I don't hear anything about like real profits with that stuff. That's way down the line. Yeah, I wouldn't be focused there. on it. So you don't like tech right now. What do you like in this environment? Um, I think I'm enamored with almost everything else. I mean, okay. you know, energy, energy still looks good this year. Um, I mean, financials look great. I mean, lending's going up. I mean, so they're making a lot of money on those net interest margins. I mean, you're still getting nothing at the bank as they're, you know, out lending money at a much higher rate. So banks should do really well this year. And I think the global markets, I mean, the, the biggest catalyst this year, forget the Fed. Everyone loves to talk about the Fed. And I talk about this in my pain points about podcasts, the best in the country, <laughs> is China. The reopening of China is huge. You know, Europe benefits from that disproportionately to, then, to the U.S., but even the U.S. is going to benefit from that. Everyone benefits from China reopening. They have about like $2 trillion worth of stimulus sitting in their accounts to spend. That has a huge impact on the global economy. You have to have a global portfolio. You're not suggesting the Fed don't matter, are you? Because you know I'm a Fed lover here. And, we, <laughs> and Jen Schomburger just gave us the latest Fed speak. And the market is falling back in line with what the Fed's been saying now for this entire tightening cycle. What's your prediction? Do you think we're headed for two more 25s and a hold until 24? Yeah, I think worst case scenario, 225s, but the bond market is telling you everything, right? The bond Which market peaked months ago at 4.2% uh, on the 10 year Treasury. It's down to 3.6%. Bond market, the bond guys are smarter than the, the Fed officials. So I think bottom line is inflation's coming down. The Fed here eventually is going to pivot. Powell's already said like 11 times in a speech the other day disinflation. He's acknowledging it now. It's over. You know, those Fed officials can stop talking.